Welcome to another episode. In this one, I'm going to focus on hunting flatfish by day and by night. Have a quick look at where they live, what sort of habitat they like, what the diet of different sorts of flatfish is. Also, a quick look at some night diving when some of the very biggest flatfish tend to come out. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate that. It does help my channel grow. Now, generally, you'll find flatfish on sandy or gravelly bottoms. Occasionally you'll see them over seaweed or kelp, but it's generally over flat sand. And this is just showing a few of the imprints they leave behind. It can be very frustrating. Now, they quite like areas with these lugworm casts, especially flounder. Flounder do seem to eat a lot of worms. Place tend to have a slightly different diet. We'll cover that later on in the video. Now, one thing I notice on the marks I dive is that most flatfish tend to be found in very sheltered bays that don't have very large ripples in the sand it seems to be particularly true of flounder now sometimes you'll find place in grooves in the sand but generally i'm finding most of my flatfish in these quite flat sandy areas now it can be unbelievably frustrating at times just drifting over the sand looking down seeing those flatfish imprints but having no idea where the flatfish actually are now occasionally you will see flatfish like this flounder just in the open it's pretty rare and sometimes you'll just see them there's a very small flounder here sometimes you'll just see them on top of the sand but again it doesn't seem to happen very often now the camouflage these animals have is absolutely incredible just see if you can spot the flatfish in these clips before they spook this is a flounder here just hidden on gravel it's perfect dapple camouflage making it almost impossible to spot another flounder here again on quite a gravelly bottom they do seem to prefer the gravelly bottoms and again see if you can spot it to better understand the behavior of flatfish i thoroughly recommend just going out for a night dive don't bother taking a gun it's illegal to spearfish at night you can use your knife though and it's really interesting because the flatfish just seem to come out and you can watch them move look at the areas they inhabit and you can often watch themselves just burying the sand which is pretty cool you can see one here just completely buried and actually grab it by hand this is pretty cool they trust their camouflage so well there's a small flounder here I'll just take this up to the top have a quick look at it and let it go and watch it shoot off now when you observe them at night you start to learn some quite interesting things about their behavior and one of those is a very particular way in which you can track flatfish now in this next clip you'll see the flatfish just gliding over the sand and you may just be able to make out the little grooves that it's made in the sand it's quite difficult in this bit of video saw a few of those little ripples in the sand and I tracked the flounder to where I knew it was going to be and in very very shallow water only about 50 centimeters deep I came across this set of eyes protruding out the sand it was really satisfying to come across this flatfish as I said previously very very shallow water literally knee deep they'll come really close at night and just to track it like that, having observed the flatfish the week before, making the little grooves in the sand was so satisfying. Come across those little eyes and a perfect stab just behind the head, not ruining any of the meat. Very, very satisfying moment. Catching flatfish in the day can be a lot harder. They seem to inhabit slightly different places. You can see a nice place that I speared a few weeks ago, just 
right up against some rocks and rough ground. You know, again, the place on the sand, but it was against some rough ground. Now, for the rest of this video, we're going to look at a recent dive session I went on specifically targeting flat. I picked an area of quite gravelly sand with some very, very strong currents. Now, it was my theory that the flatfish would be on the move in these strong currents, hunting for food, and they'd be less likely to bury themselves in the flat sand. So I started out by looking for areas with a bit of structure, potentially some hiding places. You can see here, underneath the hull of this boat, just drifting along really slowly. Well, not that slowly, the current's at about you know, one to two knots here. Just looking underneath that boat, could there be any flatfish just hiding in the shadows? Looking at another area here with a mixture of rocks and kelp, like that rough ground I'd shot the place on a few weeks previously. And these areas are of course perfect for bass, sort of two to three meters deep. Plenty of kelp, lots of rocks, great habitat. Now even in quite flat sand areas like this, you may come across some structure and this seemed to be the remains of a ship. And I imagine that some kind of ship has just been washed in here in a big storm and wrecked. And I had a really good look around this hoping to find a lobster or perhaps a brown crab. You quite often find brown crabs off North Wales on sort of flat sandy bottoms underneath some structure it seemed to really attract them. Uh, but unfortunately there was nothing here. It's a mark or a very specific area of this mark I'll keep in mind for next time I go. Now, I came across this flounder just drifting over the kelp, but before I could duck dive down and take a shot, didn't want to take a shot from the surface because the current, it sped off. I tried to track it, but it was gone. I did a few drift dives. These can be quite interesting. Just going down to kind of six to eight meters and literally letting the current just wash you along the seabed. It can be a very, very interesting way of hunting had a lot of bass at these type of marks diving like this and you never know what you're going to find i came across this massive tractor tire with a pretty large lobster hidden underneath it this was right at the end of my breath hold yeah i've been underwater about 90 seconds at this point so i've tried to grab the lobster but unfortunately only got its claw so i marked the spot with my gun and then i could follow the float line back down breathe back up on the surface staying in position head back down for a second try for this lobster. And a perfect grab right on top of the shell. Now, when I grabbed this lobster, I realised how large and how powerful that big crusher claw is. Quite often I grab smaller lobsters, but this one, pretty bad it didn't get me first. So this is a pretty powerful beast. Look at the size of that claw. Yeah, that's a good six inches long, that claw. It's a really, really nice sized lobster. Really beautiful colours on it. You know, perfect blues, lovely speckles. Absolutely beautiful creature. And of course, fantastic eating. Now, quite often when you cut open a place, you'll see it's full of sand eels, and they do really seem to favour these areas where there's a lot of bait fish, place eat a lot of sand eels, they eat small crabs as well, and they eat a lot of clams. In this particular mark, although you can't quite see it in these videos, it did have a lot of clams. And obviously one of the bonuses of looking for flat fish in areas with plenty of bait fish is you've got a good chance of a bass. see this bass just drift underneath he's pretty hard to spot in this murky viz there it is lining up the shot very difficult to shoot from the surface you're shooting at a moving target whilst you're moving in an unstable kind of medium and you can see here the bass just hanging around really frustratingly shoots off a few more drift dives and finally i see what i'm looking for big place just on the gravel i make no mistake this time shoot it straight behind the eyes and this is a really really nice place it's 43 centimeters long it's a pretty decent flatfish 
An absolutely stunning coloration on it. Yeah, there's plenty of meat on this. I actually uh, baked this one whole, just in here for lunch. Very delicious. Really, really beautiful fish. The light just shimmering off it in the current. Now I'd say plates are probably my favourite fish to shoot, my favourite fish to eat. It's a real challenge hunting them, um, but it's well worth the effort. Beautiful fish, wonderful for me, and a great taste. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. I really appreciate it. If you give it a like, drop us a comment, and subscribe to the channel, it will help this channel grow on YouTube. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. It's probably going to be one about stalking and hunting mullet in extreme shallow water. I'll see you next time.